Now, I know you might all be wondering, what does a 12-year-old boy know about the boy child crisis? I present the boy child crisis in three different stories, which are also my personal experiences. First and foremost, my thoughts about the boy child go three years back when our guidance and counseling teacher took all girls to a separate room. Us being young and nosy boys decided to eavesdrop on the conversation. Most of it dwelled on how girls should not interact with boys inappropriately. The other half was about adolescence as, and the like. But as we headed back to class, we first felt marginalized and left out and we started asking ourselves questions. Why didn't the guidance and counseling teacher do the same thing for us boys? Don't we go through these same physical and emotional changes? We have to stop the assumption that the boy child knows the way. Globally, there has been an overemphasis on girl child empowerment, and this is rapidly suffocating the boy child because we are just as vulnerable as the girl child. Most of the time, I hear my parents and grandparents discuss how boys in our rural community have become a social misfit. I know you might all be wondering, which community do I come from? Actually, most of my ancestors happen to come from Nyeri County, specifically Odaya. Anyway, moving on with my story, Apparently, these boys are rarely sober, and they spend the better part of their day drinking and hanging out with their peers in shopping centers. This behavior in the community seems to have trickled down from the fathers to their sons. As such, their mothers and wives have become the sole breadwinners of the family. I happen to have also come across a few articles in our local daily that suggest a high percentage of men in the rural parts of central Kenya are now alcoholics. You see, the girls see their hard-working mothers going to the shamba every day. Therefore, they know the only way to be successful is by working hard. Their hard-working mothers are the girls' role models. On the other hand, the boys see their fathers drunk and eating off the sweat of their mothers. Some emulate this from a young age because they have no male figure to mentor them. This then poses the question, who guides the boy child? Looking at the trend in most Kenyan homes today, we see that our fathers are so engrossed in their work. They leave the house quite early and come back very late. And when they have some spare time during the weekend, you will find them going out for social activities with their peers. As such, the upbringing of children has been left to moms and nannies. This means that us boys develop a closer relationship with our moms because it is they who are there most of the time. Yeah. In my observation, I see that us boys see our fathers as disciplinarians because they are more keen on instilling discipline rather than building up a closer relationship. This means that society is left without a male figure to mentor them. And this impacts us by having boys dropping out of school, high rates of drug and alcohol abuse, and sadly, the high cases of young boys looking for older women to support them financially. Mine today was not to castigate or undermine the efforts put to empower the girl child, no. Mine was a plea, rather a cry, for the boy child who seems forgotten. As I conclude, but before I do so, remember what they say in chess, there is no question without an answer. I challenge governmental organizations, non-governmental organizations, because if one arm of the society does not work, the society at large cannot function. Thank you.